Well, as you know, in the nation, you have all kinds of people. You have people that not even not even attached to, to the community. They like what they hear, but you just can't live the life. Anything might happen, that scare you. Anything could happen. The atmosphere was there. What was being said was there. You see, you got to understand, you know, Mr. Muhammad and what he represented. Jackass! All of them was X's over there. 
until you understand it was decided that we have a holy name. I want you to know this because you got to understand. Because somebody might make you make by talk you into making a move and you don't understand. And you be coming to come up against your brother. But I'm letting you know, brother, when you met us, you met your mammy. I want to warn you. Because I know the provocateurs are sitting here. They're here listening. But I want to warn you. You forgot that we were here. We had just been laying dormant. Why? It's because we were, we were working. We were working quietly because it is necessary. And we're not threatening you. That's not our, that's not our, um, uh, that's not our desire to do that. We don't want to do that, but we just want to let you know. So, uh, in order to get your ex, you had to write a letter. You didn't know that. You walking around with eggs on, but you don't even know what that is. That was placed there to signify that you recognize that the name after, in other words, your mother is your given name. Then you gotta ask, that means that I don't know what my slave name is. It ain't Jones, it ain't Johnson, it ain't Anthony, it's not O'Brien, O'Toole, I just don't know. And if anybody know, anybody know about mathematics, you know that the X is an unknown quantity. A wise man said to give him an X. Mr. Muhammad wasn't the one to give the X. A wise man told him, the one that God come and talk, Mr. Muhammad. He said he give out approximately 25,000 names, holy names as they call them. Kareem, Barkar, Ali, Rashid, he give out all those names. But then he left, he stayed here three years and then he left. Mr. Muhammad said, what should I do? He said, if you want to give him some names, all right. You have my permission for you to name them. But in the meantime, give him X, Joseph X. Joseph 1X, Joseph 2X, Joseph 3X, and on up. That's how you got it. But in order for you to get the X, you gotta write a letter. Took me a year to write it because it had to be perfect. Inside the nation of Islam, Spike Lee can't take you there because he wasn't there, number one. And then he's in love. You don't fall in love if you try to teach people the truth. If you're in love with a man, why aren't you what he is? Malcolm was a Muslim. We know he was a Muslim because we were with him and we made him a Muslim. Elijah Muhammad made him a Muslim by teaching him truth. Father Jesus ain't no Muslim. Ruby D not, Ruby D not no Muslim. Spike Lee ain't no Muslim. He said he didn't believe in no, no religion. But in order to walk with Malcolm, you had to be a Muslim. I walked with him for 12 long years until Mr. Muhammad sent him away and walked with Falcon 11 years until he decided to leave and worked for Elijah Muhammad 25 long years and I did such a good job. You know what he told me one day? He said, Brother Captain, I said, yes, sir. He said, you got a lifetime job with me. And he's the only leader that you know of in this modern day. That when he passed, he took his shoes off. He wasn't like Custer. He didn't die with his boots on, brother. He took his shoes off. You know why? We, Allah was with him, number one, and then we laid at his door. And didn't let our hair get messed up on his head. Because the fact that he was there, the man of sacrifice, you called him the fruit of Islam. Then I met Mr. X. Cause I don't disrespect any man. Mr. X. He come in, he was a very imposing man. You could tell that he was intelligent, he knew where he wanted to go, you could tell that. And then we struck up a conversation. Because they meet up, they introduce all the new ones to those who have been there. We introduce each other. Because this that we have was built on love. That's why you still is still See it standing like a solid wall. It's a solid brick wall. That's why you see it standing. I know men that served 20 years in here today and was and was not guilty. But they weathered the storm. Because you know why? Because he wasn't confused because Allah had his mind up here. He bore witness that there was no God but Allah. And hell, I don't care what it is, the gates of hell could not prevail against his mind. Because he knew what he was doing, knew why he was there, and for what reason. You couldn't do that. Take a man to do that. Take a man to do that. And I haven't had an opportunity to say that, but I 
I want to say it before a whole lot of people so you'll know. Because we struggle. We struggle. And it comes time for Mr. X to be get appointed to his teaching. He just didn't start out in no New York. He was in the fruit just like I was. And one day he wrote a letter to Mr. Muhammad. And you know what he did? He criticized a minister by the name of Lemio. Lemio X. And the Holy Apostle, you know, the man is not teaching right, you know what I mean? He, he ain't studying. Uh, uh, his wife runs him and everything. Maybe he was telling the truth. But let me tell you what Mr. Muhammad told him. He said, Brother, I received your letter. He said, However, I don't appreciate you were criticizing my minister because I put him there. I know his assets and liabilities. I know his weakness and I know his strengths. I know all about his wife. I put him there. And I'll back him. And I don't appreciate you writing to me, criticizing him. And I want to let you know that. Because I'll back him. Now, what you do, if you go to him, and ask him, can you help him? If he accepts you, then I will accept you. And that's how Mr. X got on what they call the roster standing at the podium. That's the only way he got up there. I'm going to bring it to you because these are liars. And God hates the liars. But I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you shoot me down now, come on, shoot. What I want to show you briefly, I want to show you briefly that when you start out in this popular, the question remains, can you take what you put out? That's the question here. It's not love. It's not your name. But can you take, if you dish out punishment, can you take your punishment when it comes your time? So he started teaching. And he was good. Then one day he come to me, he even made me quit my job. I had a job paid me $150, I'm a culinary artist. In, 19, in, the first, in 1951, late 51, early 52, that was big money. You know what he told me? He come to me, he said, brother, we got a restaurant down there, call your boss. He said, they ain't got no cook down there. I said, well. He said, well, you a cook, aren't you? I said, yeah, I'm a cook. He said, well, we need you to go down there and help. I said, brother, I'm working. He said, yeah, I know you're working, but we need you down there to help. I said, what do you want? What, I mean, what do you want me to do? I'm working. He said, but don't you love? Don't you want to help Elijah Muhammad? Don't you help, want to help do this work? That was my weakness. Because I loved Elijah Muhammad. I'd never seen him, but I listened to what he was saying. I loved him with a passion. I didn't love him uh, 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 blindly, but I loved him because I could see what he was doing and what he was saying. So I quit my job and went down there to work. You know what they were paying down there? He said, now, nah, we're going to pay you $25 a week if we get it. And most of the time, they didn't have it. And he had, they had an old raggedy room upstairs over the temple. He said, now you can stay there. He was living out there in Eastern Michigan. That's where he was living when I won. He ain't no, there's no Detroit Red, brother. We were players. That brother, man, we were players. We hung out with the pimp hustlers. Players. So we know all of them come through, all the star holes and everything. We knew them because that was our thing. So he was in Easter, which is a suburb of Detroit. I'll run it down, brother, because history is best qualified to reward our research. So he come to me one day, I went there, started working. So one day he come to me, he said, brother, do you hear what they're saying about me? I said, no, I don't know what they're saying about you. I ain't heard nothing. He said, brother, I'm getting ready to leave this town. I said, for what? He said, they're talking about me. I said, what they're talking about you for? Because you don't even know. First of all, you don't even know he started out in Detroit. And you don't even know why he left Detroit. You say, well, he's dead. 
Well, then if he bring it back alive, and then he'll come up here and bear witness to truth or falsehood. But you can't. You know why? You can't follow a dead man. You haven't seen nobody come back yet. And it never will be. That's not God's way. He set a precedent. He said, you're born and you die. When I call you, you're gone. Because I'm a, I'm a man to tell the truth. I'm just about finished now because we don't want to tell you everything, get to get into everything, because we have another speaker here. And he can talk too. We all could talk. How do you think we couldn't talk when you're seeing all those people around? You think one man did that? Do you think Mr. X was the only one that was working? This is what you got to understand. If you've seen all those people and seen them going from coast to coast when he went on the west coast, this man was the one. Malcolm ain't never sold no papers and he never went out fishing. That's a lie. Never did. He didn't have to. All he would come is teeth. You think Mr. X was the only one that was working? This is what you got to understand. If you've seen all those people and seen them going from coast to coast when he went on the west coast, this man was the one. Malcolm ain't never sold no papers and he never went out fishing. That's a lie. Never did. He didn't have to. All he would come is cheap and I've got witnesses. It's different with you, you talking, but I've got witnesses. We went out and did the fishing. Okay, so he left. I'm not going to tell you what they were saying about him. But you, we are weak. You talked about Mr. Muhammad, you ain't up live, a uh, hook, line, and sinker. They say the same thing about Clinton. They say the same thing about the TV minister. And Mr. Muhammad didn't do anything like that and took care of what he made. You don't see the women saying anything, do you? Why did Spike bring them? A liar. And we don't intend to forgive him for that. And you can take the word back to him because I know he got people in there today. Take it back to him. He is a liar. He's in love with a dead man. But I'm letting you know if you let a dead man lead you, you are lost. You got to, if a dad, I don't care how good the man is. And I love Elijah Muhammad. You got to go find your living man to follow. And if you're that ignorant, then so be it. Okay, where the first place we go? Boston, Massachusetts. You know, they taught me how to say, they don't say Massachusetts. They say, no, brother. They said, you say, uh, you don't say Mass Massachusetts. You say Massachusetts. We started out up there on the street in Back Bay. Five Wellington. Five Wellington. First thing he told me, he was cutting meat. And when he was in the church, he was working construction. But I'm going to tell you the kind of job he had. And I'm not fighting his flesh. You want to hear the truth, right? I'm going to tell you what the facts are. He waved the flag out there. You know how the, they got the women out there waving flags? So they don't have to hire you to get a woman and a black woman. So they got to hire a woman and a minority. That's what he was doing, waving the flag. He maneuvered himself into that because you got to understand. He wasn't no, no he, 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 he knew what was happening. He wasn't no square. He knew how to move around and get the best thing. And he used that. If you don't think he did, then you, you don't know what's happening. But I was there. It's a difference. In other words, I'm going to get the job that I don't have to do too much labor. And if he could do it, so more power to him. So in Boston, he was cutting me. I told him I'm going to get me a job. He said, what kind of job are you going to get? I said, well, I'm getting my knife in pork, my man. He said, oh, no, you can't do that. What are you talking about? He said, how you going to handle pork? You following Malcolm? He ain't no pork. None whatsoever. First thing he thought, when he, last thing he did, when he closed the temple, getting ready to go home, he tell you about that hall. And he used to, you know what he used to call them? Chitlins. Chitlins. Then after we got in Boston, next thing I looked around, he left. What the hell is this? What is this? So, I got myself together, because there's an argument up there. <laughs> uh, 
I said, I'm not going to stay with this fool. Is he gone? So I'm getting my hat to So I went to Springfield with a brother who was in prison with him called Osborne Faxon. I don't know about this, this mythical man that they have up there in the prison with him. I don't know him. What is his name? Bane. We don't know no damn Bane, do we? We don't know no Bane. We don't know no beans. So we, we did, you know, we grinded in Boston, flourishing. Next thing I know, he had fell off here with this brother. This brother opened up his home to him. That's where he stayed. He didn't have nothing. His brother gave him all his clothes that he was wearing. You think you know Malcolm? Tell me what size underwear he wore. Tell me where he bought his suits at. What was the name of the place that was in the lake, in, in, in the suit pockets? What size shoe did he wear? Did he wear socks that fell down? I had to tell him to put some up, put some garters on to hold up your damn sock. Why? It's because he went to the penitentiary in the 40s. 46 or 47. 10 years, you 10 years behind. You might hear what's going on out here. But you got to get out here and live it to know what's happening. And you know that because most of us have been in the penitentiary, which is the largest conglomerate in this country, the penal system. And you are the one that's in there, the largest conglomerate in the country. Big business. So he called me, he said, what you doing in Springfield? I thought I left you in Boston. I said, you did, brother, but I'm not fooling with them people no more. I said, I found help them find a place, and I'll come here with Brother Osborne, Maxton, and Charles that was in prison with him. We don't know nothing about no pains now. I'll be finished in a second. I don't want to bore you, but I'll be second, but I want to set the record straight. If it costs me my life, I'm going to set the record straight. Because I know I will be avenged. No one goes without being avenged, brother, if you a Muslim. It might take the Muslim 20 years, but the Holy Quran said fight against those who fight against you. Never be the aggressor, but if they attack you, fight in the name of Allah. Of Allah. To the end. And we don't, we don't wound, we go all the way. You have old saying, take him out. That's how you establish a nation, fearless men. Men who, who are for right. You can't, you can't say that you're with us, and then next thing we know you're doing something else, you got to stay away from us. So he said to me, he said, brother, he said, uh, I told him, well, I'm here, I'm going to get ready to help Brother Osborne. He said, well, brother, he said, you're wasting your time. I said, what do you mean I'm wasting my time? I said, he's he getting ready to teach Islam up here in Springfield. How's uh, that wasting my time? He said, well, see, because he was a smart man. Once you caught him and lined him up, put him in a bath canyon, he would move over. What you don't understand is that the man was a craftsman. He was a player. He was a pimp. You think he forgot all those maneuvers? You're crazy. So he said, okay, then I'll tell you what. He said, I want to bring you here. I said, where? To Philadelphia. And incidentally, he didn't pay my way to Boston, neither to Springfield. Now he calling me to Philly. I didn't ask him to come there. I didn't ask him. This little functional illiterate didn't ask him. You say, how that little fat pig I do gonna be with Malcolm? But I don't have to, I don't have to prove it. I got witnesses. It must have been something about me that he wanted. And he can bear witness. The next time he see me, I come in there. I wasn't wearing like a water. I had me a little Jeff on, you know, a little cap. Just moving. They met us. At the, met me at the train. And we got there. We went to work in Philly. In fact, we were so bad in Philly that Mr. Muhammad sent a, a, a representative with, you know, a, a king, a president. When you're doing good, he sent some representatives to let you know you're doing good. He sent Wallace Dean Muhammad, Raymond Sharif, the Supreme Captain. He sent John Hassan, the, the head investigator. He sent Herbert Muhammad and Ward D. Muhammad and Ethel Sharif, Mr. Muhammad's daughter. 
They were coming in on the reason they didn't get there, the car turned over. Three times and then nobody got hurt. But we were grinding. And I'm gonna finish now. Cause I'm gonna let you know how you got to New York and then I'm gonna finish. But I want you to know, don't play with us because we're not playing. We're gonna tell you the truth. We're not gonna lie to you. I've been married 37 years since they come from his city, Philadelphia. She was a jitterbug, but she, she, she accepted Islam. Malcolm's personal secretary did all this research when she was there. I married her in 1955, got six children, and been married 37 years. She, I, she, I'm nine years older than her, and she's still grinding. Because Muhammad made men. She saw us just standing and didn't know what to do. This is all God. So then it comes time for Malcolm to come to New York. Anybody know how he come there? You want me to tell you? All right, there was a man who heard Mr. Farad Muhammad. His name was Sultan Muhammad. And he fell, he fell out of favor with Elijah Muhammad because his wife was talking about him. And he called a man in. He, he never talked to a man uh, about own anything. And most of the time, he never talked to no brothers or anyone one-on-one. -on -one. He always talked to you in front of everybody. Because he didn't have no secrets. To make a long story short, Mr. Muhammad had to dismiss Sultan Muhammad. He was over the temples in New York and Washington, D.C. And he could roar like a lion. Big and posing man. Stood up straight. He met Mr. Farad Muhammad himself and shook his hand. I had never seen him before. And neither none of these brothers, just a picture. But we're not going to deny that he come because that's a lie. And I'm not going to live no lie. So Mr. Muhammad called to New York. Brother Malcolm. Brother Minister Malcolm, he didn't talk like that Freeman talk. Mr. Muhammad talked better than that. Although he did just had a third grade education, but he was bad. If he can attract Malcolm, you know he's been bad now. Because here's what he used to say, a dependable mule is better than a fast racehorse. If I know you're going to stumble down the line, I'm not going to not use you. I'm going to wait till you get to that line. And if you stumble, then I'll act. A dependable mule is better than a fast racehorse. He said, I am going to appoint you my minister in New York. This is where Malcolm wanted to be all the time. Everything he did, he would maneuver to get to New York. You know why he wanted to get here? Number one is that, here's what he used to say. I would rather be a assistant minister in New York than to be a minister anywhere else in the country. I don't care where it was. I'd rather be in New York. Why? It's because Mr. X realized that the world's media is here. He realized the most uh, uh, intelligent people, black people in the world, lived in Harlem, 500,000 strong in one area. He realized that because he had been here, he knew that. And all he had to do is come here and start his conquest. Mr. Muhammad made him. Mr. Muhammad gave him permission to speak wherever you heard him speak. He had to ask Mr. Muhammad first. And you're talking about that sleazy Ozzie Davis, he'll give a play downtown called uh, Pearly Victorious. Malcolm come, he said, well, the minister, uh, 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 I, the minister give me permission to go down there and see it. Because, you know, we didn't go to shows, you know. You talking about you wanted to follow Malcolm. We didn't go to no movies. Catch you in the movie, you get 30 This truth, this truth that we are presenting to you, announcing to some, telling others, and reawaking others that victory is at hand. It was worth our struggle, it was worth whatever we did. Some of my colleagues in their grave, the great Hussein Shabazz, class seven, they're in their grave, wrapped up in the clay. Usman Shah, wrapped up in the clay. My friends, your friends, for this cause. This is a great work, otherwise I wouldn't start out with it because I'm not an idiot. And I worked with the top people, worked for Don King 10 years, taught him something, saved his life. 
They're getting ready to take him out, save his life. Didn't we get man? He called me Joseph, I called him Jeremiah. <laughs> so I want to thank you. <laughs>